Hello all, welcome to IIT and Git classes. Today we are going to look into this chapter of theory of machines. Okay, let us first see what is the importance of theory of machines with respect to gate. Theory of machines, in short form, we call it as Tom. Tom is right on the top after aptitude maps and production for gate mechanical engineering paper. Aptitude, as we know, has a uh, weightage of around 15%. Maths is also has an average weightage of around 15%. Production has an average weight of weightage of around 13%. And theory of machine has an average weightage of around 10 marks, that is 10%, which is right after production. So this is a very important subject with respect to gate, mechanical. Now, what are the other plus points of theory of machines? The other plus points are, it is a very interesting subject. Yeah, it is damn interesting. It is very scoring. If you understand the concepts, it is a very, very scoring subject, okay? It's a lifelong companion. I mean to say, we are surrounded by machines. If you know theory of machines properly, you have studied theory of machines, whenever you look around and see different machines, you'll be able to understand the principles on which these machines are working and this gives an immense amount of satisfaction and this is a practical subject by practical all engineering subjects are practical what i mean to say is that we get to see the application of theory of machines in our life in our day-to-day -day life around us right so what let us see what exactly is there in gate syllabus for theory of machines okay we're talking about mechanical engineering okay so here if you see i've given a schematic diagram of a ic engine internal combustion engine okay so i'm not going into detail but let me see what are the, we can find out the different chapters that will be required to be studied to actually design this IC engine okay so what is this IC engine what exactly happens here you can see there is a spark plug okay so from the inlet manifold fuel plus air mixture comes in the spark plug spark is produced in the spark plug and there is a combustion out here right so a force is applied on the piston the piston moves down right so in that process the connecting rod moves okay and the crank moves and a rotational motion is achieved and a rotational motion is achieved so what exactly is happening here is what exactly is happening here is the reciprocating motion of the piston is converted into rotating motion of the crank shaft okay the crank or you can say the, there is a crank shaft here there will be a crank shaft here and through some gear mechanisms okay this is connected to the wheels of your vehicle this is connected to there will be some other mechanisms in between and through these mechanisms this will be connected to the wheels of your vehicle so if you see if you see what is this ic engine doing this is ic engine is converting the chemical energy into mechanical energy chemical energy of the fuel into mechanical energy of the piston okay the piston is moving to and fro okay up and down reciprocating okay and that reciprocating motion is actually converted into rotary motion okay so basically this is nothing else but a machine this is nothing else but a machine okay so to design this machine what are the different things you have to study the first thing you have to study is this mechanism right how is this reciprocating motion converted into rotary motion right there are four links you can see this is link number one okay the piston the piston is link number one then this is link number two the connecting rod is the link number two then this is link number four the crank is link number four and my dear the cylinder okay, which is fixed okay, the cylinder is link number four right one two three four okay there are four links here so this is basically a 
four bar mechanism okay three bar and one slider you can say so this is a mechanism so you have to learn about mechanisms okay the first thing that you have to do is learn about mechanisms what after that after that you have to analyze if the piston is moving down with a velocity v what will be the angular velocity of the connecting rod definitely you have to find it out right you have to determine the speed of the vehicle so next after simple mechanisms you will study velocity and acceleration analysis right then using as i have said using some gear mechanisms okay some transmission mechanisms the power from the shaft will be transferred to the wheels right so you have to study about gears you have to study about gears okay you have to study about gears okay thereafter you will study things like uh, flywheel because the power power is not continuous right combustion takes place only in one of the motion right only only during one of the motion uh, throughout throughout uh, the cycles there is a four cycles okay the suction right compression then there is the power which is the combustion stroke this is the combustion stroke okay and uh, then you have exhaust right you might be knowing i am not talking much into detail but you might be knowing a little bit of uh, ic engines so that's why i'm using these terms okay so power is available only in one of these strokes right so definitely the it is discontinuous right this is discontinuous energy is discontinuous for that we require flywheel for a smooth functioning of the vehicle we require flywheel okay then you'll be learning about balancing because this I see engine will produce lot of vibration, lot of it has it will not be balanced initially. You have to balance it. Okay, if balancing is not proper, there will be vibration, right? So you will also have to study vibration, how to minimize vibration, and apart from that, you have to study cams and followers. What are cams and followers? This inlet valve and the exhaust valve. These are the opening and closing of the inlet valve and exhaust valve. Are actually controlled by cam and followers. Okay, the cams are connected to the shaft. Okay, the cams are connected to the shaft, and the motion of the cam uh, results in opening and closing of this uh, inlet valve and exhaust valve. Okay, and uh, also we'll study some uh, other machines like gyroscope. What exactly is gyroscope? Gyroscope is not used in uh, uh, automobiles, but it is used in spacecrafts. Uh, uh, aircrafts and um, ships and submarines okay heavy duty uh, uh, vehicles right so these are these are the simple simple uh, things that we are exactly going to study right as i said uh, simple mechanism velocity and acceleration analysis gears and gear trains then this is a slider crank mechanism what we are seeing here is a slider crank mechanism we will do kinematic and dynamic analysis of the slider crank mechanism uh, fly, flywheel balancing okay balancing is required because uh, this kind of ic engines it will have lot of unbalanced forces and if the iron unbalanced forces are not balanced and the vehicle will not be in a position uh, to move right it will be very very uncomfortable right so uh, we will also have to you will not be able to eliminate all the vibrations we have to see what are different methods to have eliminate vibration right so we will study cams and followers and also we will study gyroscope so these are the basic chapters that we are going to study in theory of machines right this is what is there for gate and in today's class my dear this is myself anubhav parasa okay and i have four years of teaching experience right teaching mechanical engineering it has been four years now okay and uh, in today's class we are going to go through gears today's class we are going to go through we are going to take up the chapter gears so let us get started let us get started so what exactly is gear used for what exactly is gear used for the function there are three three basic functions of a gear okay the what are the three basic functions the first is to transmit power from one shaft to another transmit power from one shaft to another suppose there are two shafts suppose there are two shafts this is one shaft and this is another shaft 
ओके देर आर टू सास लिख में से देर आर टू सास दिस काइंड ऑफ सास ओके सो वन ऑफ द साफ इट इज़ रोटेटिंग ठीक है वन ऑफ द साफ इट इज़ रोटेटिंग एंड यू वॉन्ट दिस मोशन वी ट्रांसफर टू दिस साफ सो दैट दिस साफ ऑल्सो रोटेट्स ओके सो वॉट आर द डिफरेंट मैकेनिज्म पॉसिबल यू कैन यूज ए बेल्ट ड्राइव You can use a rope drive, right? You can use a chain drive. But my dear, this drives. There is a problem with this drives. What is the problem with this drive? Is that this drives cannot completely eliminate the problem of slip. This drives cannot completely eliminate the problem of slip. Okay. So, but we don't want slip. we don't want slip so what is the best option okay what is the best option if you don't want slip to transmit power from one shaft to another it is gear drives it is gear drives okay what is the second second function of gear it is to magnify torque it is to magnify the torque i'll just give you an example you must have ever driven a car or a scooter geared scooter or a motorbike if you've driven it it's good you'll give you'll be able to catch up what i'm talking about if not you can ask your father or mother uh, whoever you any of your parents or your brother or sister if they are they have ever driven right so the vehicle always starts from gear 1 whenever we are trying to whenever the vehicle is at rest and we want the vehicle to start moving we shift the gear to gear 1 and as the vehicle starts moving slowly shift the gear to gear 2 then we move on to gear 3 as the speed increases we move on to higher gears so why are we doing this why are why we always make the vehicle start from gear 1 because gear 1 is a smaller gear and it helps us to magnify the torque see the ic engine it is going to produce almost same amount of power okay so power is going to produce certain amount of torque okay so this torque when a vehicle is in stationary condition it requires maximum amount of torque to make the vehicle move and once the momentum is created slightly comparatively less amount of torque is required for a vehicle to move okay so we shift the gear to gear 1 which is going to provide maximum amount of torque so the vehicle starts moving and there on we shift on to higher gears where actually compromise on the torque with speed okay this things you will get to learn this things you will get to learn throughout the chapter slowly and steadily when i'll release the concepts okay you will get to learn all these things okay and one more function of gear this is also a very important function this is increase or decrease the speed mostly decrease in speed mostly decrease in speed i'll tell you how okay if you've ever been on a car you must have seen the tachometer what is the tachometer tachometer is the meter which gives you the rpm okay there is a needle in every car you'll find it okay in every vehicle be it a car or even bikes you'll find it okay it starts you will see that when a car is moving in a normal speed the tachometer reading is 3000 rpm to somewhere around 5000 rpm the tachometer the tachometer reading will be something around 3000 rpm to 5000 rpm so what is this 3000 rpm to 5000 rpm this is the revolution speed of the crank shaft this is the revolution speed of the crank shaft means the crank shaft the i scenes in your scene the crank shaft is actually moving at a speed of somewhere around 3000 to 5000 revolutions per minute okay but do you think this is the same speed of the wheels do you think the wheels are also moving at the same speed is the same amount of speed is being transferred to to the wheels of the car vehicle let us try to find out let us try to find out let us take a normal wheel of uh, say 14 inch diameter take okay? a generally cars uh like uh you can say any maruti small small hatchback cars like right? even in the sedans like right? the wheels will be of 14 inches 
the wheels will be of around 14 inch so if it is 14 inch so diameter is 14 inch diameter is 14 inch 14 inch means 14 point uh, into 2.52 1 inch is equal to 2.52 centimeter so this is equal to 14 into 2.52 is 35.28 35.28 centimeter okay 35.28 centimeter diameter is 35.28 centimeter okay so in one revolution when one revolution of the wheel if the wheel revolves one re makes one revolution what is the distance covered can i say it is equal to pi into d the distance covered is equal to pi into d right that is 35.28 multiplied by 3.14 okay i am giving taking an approximate value so it is somewhere around 110 110 point something i am not writing the full right i am just taking a approximate amount okay so 110 centimeter right so the wheel is traveling a distance of 110 centimeter in one revolution right one revolution in one revolution okay now let us say the car is moving at a speed of 60 kilometer per hour the car is moving at a speed of 60 kilometer per hour okay so what is 110 centimeter can i say it is equal to 1.1 meter 110 centimeter is nothing else but 1.1 meter so in one revolution okay the car moves ahead by 1.1 meter let us see how many meters is 60 kilometer per hour this is equal to 60 into 1000 meters divided by 60 minute so in one minute if you cancel the 60 in one minute the car moves 1000 meters right if the car if the vehicle is moving at a speed of 60 kilometer per minute uh, sorry per hour means it is moving 1000 meters per minute i hope you are getting it okay so how many revolutions so how many revolutions how many revolutions of the wheel how many revolutions of the wheel so in one minute the wheel will revolve 1000 divided by 1.1 right because one revolution of wheel is 1.1 meter so in one minute the vehicle is moving 1000 meters so in one minute how many time the wheel revolves that is equal to 1000 divided by 1.1 so 1000 if you do 1000 divided by 1.1 it is somewhere equal to 909 this is equal to 909 revolutions per minute rpm so you see the ic engine the engine the crankshaft is moving somewhere around in between 3000 rpm to 5000 rpm whereas the wheel right the vehicle the, the wheel of the vehicle it is moving at a sp speed of angular speed of somewhere around 900 to 1000 revolutions per minute right so how is this difference being bought into i hope you got it i hope you got it so how is this decrease in speed made possible this was made possible using gears this was made possible using gears so this is a very very important right so you imagine if the if the whole amount of speed from the crankshaft has to be transferred to the wheels right this is almost three times right your car would have move with a speed of 180 kilometer per hour right so this was practically not possible right so we have to reduce the speed so for reducing the speed what we do we use gears systems okay i hope you got it what is the function of a gear right these three are the most important functions of a gear so let us see what was used before the invention of a gear gear was invented somewhere around 400 bc this was a time of when uh, almost when uh, gautam Bud or mahavir jain were born okay since that time since that time almost uh, 2500 years ago people have been using gears but what before that but what before the invention of the okay, invention of the gear before invention of the gear people were using friction wheel people were using friction wheel 
सो वॉट एक्जैक्टली इज फ्रिक्शन व्हील फ्रिक्शन व्हील यू आर सिंपल व्हील्स दे विल बी टू व्हील्स ओके सो वॉट दे आर डूइंग दे आर एक्चुअली रफनिंग अप द सर्कमफेरेंस ऑफ द व्हील दे आर सिंपली रफनिंग अप मेकिंग द सर्फेस ऑफ द व्हील increasing the friction in the surface of the wheel now when these two wheels are pressed against each other this wheels are pressed against each other okay and connected using shafts the rotation of one wheel makes the other wheel rotate because of the friction because of the friction okay because of the friction but this kind of drives had some problem this could be used only for low power transmission or low speed what was the problem at high speed and high power transmission slip occurs okay this kind of devices where slip occurs are known as negative drive what are example of negative negative drive l drive bell drive is also an example of negative drive rope drive okay these are example of negative drives because slip occurs okay now gear is example of a positive drive okay so how how to eliminate so it could be used only for low power transmission and low speed right so how to use what to do for high speed and high power transmission right people said why not increase the people said why not increase the roughness and instead of roughness why not make some projections here make some projections on, along the circumference of the friction wheel and this is how gear came into being and this is how gears came into being let us see this is what they invented this were the friction wheels and they made some projections and they made some projections on the circumference of the friction wheel right these are known as teats these are called these are the teats right so what happened this completely eliminated now no slip is possible in this case if this kind of is this kind of uh, things are used to uh, transfer power right there is no possibility of slip here you can see how the gears are matching this is called matching of gear this is called matching of gear you can see no slip is possible here right in this area there is no slip possible like right? no slip this kind of device where no slip is possible they are called positive drives positive drive so basically gear drive is example of a positive drive so let us see let us see what are the different types of gears available right according how can we classify gears okay this is the first kind of classification we are talking we are going to discuss right this is on the basis of relative position of their shaft axis relative position of their shaft axis let us first consider what kind of gears we will use if the shafts are parallel what kind of shaft what kind of gears we will use if the shafts are parallel to each other right now for parallel shafts parallel shafts if there are two parallel shafts we can actually transfer the power using cylinders we can transfer the power using cylinders how this is a cylinder and let me say this is another cylinder okay the power can be transmitted between two shafts two parallel shafts using cylinders okay what we need to do is to make projections on the cylinders what I, what we need to do is make projection of this cylinders okay these are some important questions they might ask you right so if for parallel shafts for parallel shafts the power rolling motion the rolling motion right can be transmitted between two cylindrical surfaces okay so if you take a portion of the cylinder cylinder is a big one right cylinder is the length of the cylinder is generally more so if you take a portion of the cylinder and make teats on that portion okay those kind of gears will be used for parallel shafts those kind of gears will be used for parallel shafts the first 
type of gear that we use. This is the first type of gear, first kind of gear that came into being. Okay, this is the first kind of gear that came into being. This is spar gear. So for spar gear, the teeth are straight. The teeth are straight and parallel to the axis of rotation. The teeth are straight and parallel to the axis of rotation. You can see here, I have to give you the diagram. Let me say this is one of the soft. This is another soft. Okay, you can see. You can see, right? The two softs. The power is being trans transferred from one. So if one of the soft is rotating, it is making the other soft rotate using the gears. These are spur gears. These are spur gears. If you see the teeth, if you see the teeth, the teeth are parallel to the axis of rotation. If you see the teeth, even here, if you see the teeth, the teeth are parallel to the axis of rotation. This is the axis of rotation, right? The teeth are parallel to the axis of rotation, right? These are the teeth. These are the teeth. This is one 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 teeth, right? There are a lot many teeth. There are a lot many teeth. Similarly, here, one teeth, 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 right? So if you see, the teeth are the teeth are parallel to the teeth are these are the axis of rotation axis of rotation and if you see the teeth if you see the teeth they are parallel to the axis of rotation the teeth are parallel to the axis of rotation this kind of gears are known as spur gears but there was very, very, very bad problem with spar gears. What is that problem? The problem is of instantaneous, instantaneous engagement, and disengagement. The problem was of instantaneous engagement and disengagement. What exactly do I mean by instantaneous engagement and disengagement? You see this teeth, right? You see this teeth, right? When they engage with each other at an instant, at an instant they will form an engagement, right? They are moving at a very fast rate. Here, here the engagement will take place. Here the engagement will take place, right? Just at an instant, the whole of the teeth will start engaging and they are moving it very fast. You have seen in the RPM, right? It will be somewhere around, it might be around uh, two, three thousand RPM if the speed is high. So instantly they got engaged and thereafter, at an instant, they will get disengaged. At a very sp short period of time, they will get disengaged, right? So this resulted in impact forces. Impact forces. Right? What is impact? When force is acting for a very small period of time, it is known as impact. So this resulted in impact forces and for impact forces, the stresses, the impact stress, it is much, much greater than the normal stress we used to find out using force divided by area. And this resulted in the failure of the spur gears. This resulted, this impact stresses, which is very high, it resulted in failures of these gears and the people were unable to use them for high speed they were unable to unable to use the spur gears for high speed so basically these gears still find application but only for low speed and low power transmission the spur gears still find applications but only for low speed and low power transmission but we had to solve the problem scientists had to solve the problem right so what did they do they came up with new design of gear that is helical gear mind you we are going for same kind of shafts the shafts are parallel you can see there are two shafts this is one of soft and this is the second shaft right this is one shaft this is the second shaft both the shafts are parallel to each other Okay. Power is being transmitted 
okay power is being transmitted between two subs which are parallel to each other okay okay but what did the scientists do what did the engineers do they make the teeth they made the teeth inclined they made the teeth inclined to the axis of rotation they made the teeth inclined to the axis of rotation you can see this is the axis of rotation this is the axis of rotation the teeth unlike the spar gears for spar gears the teeth were parallel to the axis of rotation for helical gear the teeth are now inclined to the axis of rotation so how did this solve the problem now what happened there are two gears you can see if you see any gear any teeth so teeth are the teeth are coming into a contact not not the whole teeth will come into contact instantaneously but gradually only a point contact initially initially the teeth of the gears are having a point contact right and from point contact they will slowly move on to from point they will slowly move on to line contact from point contact they will slowly move on to line contact simultaneously they are also transferring the power right and again from line contact they will move to point contact and they will disengage and they will this thing is so this is this is the phenomenon they are following they are not having instantaneous engagement disengagement as in case of spur gears as in case of spur gears there is a instantaneous engagement here and instantaneous disengagement here when the engagement happens the whole of the teeth are coming into contact and when the disengagement happens the whole of the teeth are getting disengaged but for helical gears at the engagement only point contact is happening slowly it is getting transformed into line contact and again just before it, it will move from line contact to point contact and then it gets disengaged so here i can say the type of engagement is gradual gradual engagement and disengagement and this resulted in overcoming the problem of failure at high speeds and high power transmission and we this is one of the most most used most widely used type of gears okay but they came up with some other problem this gear came presented some other problem what exactly is the problem now if you see for spar gears if you see for spar gears in which direction the spar gears are applying the force on the teeth definitely in this way right perpendicular to the shafts perpendicular to the axis of rotation right perpendicular to the shafts so we will be having bearings we will be having the shafts are definitely mounted on bearings the shafts are mounted on bearings so bearings are only withstanding radial load right the reactions on the bearings will be radial right radial reactions but in case of helical gears in case of helical gears you can see in case of helical gears you can see the force will be perpendicular to the teeth definitely the force that is being applied will be perpendicular to the teeth if you if you resolve this force there will be two type of forces one radial force and one axial force there will be radial force and also an axial force now you have to design the bearing now you have to design the bearing for both type of forces axial force and radial force now my dear please get this point radial force is not helping this gear to move what is this radial force radial force is this one do you think this radial force oh sorry axial force this is the axial force do you really think that this axial force will help this gear to rotate no not at all it is only causing trouble to the bearings it is only presenting in new trouble to the bearings right this is a useless force 
and on the top of it it is causing a problem right so this is unwanted axial force are unwanted and this helical gears came up with this unwanted axial force now engineers will definitely come up with some solution definitely this is the solution they presented they gave us double helical gear they gave us double helical gear so in double helical gears the teeth are inclined okay but there are two different uh, oriented different hand key uh, teeth on either side of the gear right so what will happen the two axial forces one axial force will be in this side and equal amount of axial force will be in this side and this two axial forces will get cancelled out this two axial forces will get cancelled out so this kind of gears are known as double helical gear this kind of gears are known as double helical gears now there is another kind of gear this is known as herringbone gear so what is the difference between double helical gear and herringbone gear is that uh, herringbone gear is actually not practically possible herringbone gear is not practically possible if you see double helical gear there is a certain amount of gap here right double helical gear will look something like this double helical gear will look something like this this is one set of teeth and this is the other set of teeth there is some amount of space here as you can see here this is known as tool run out because while manufacturing of the gears teeth while while machining of the teeth the tool tool has to take a turn right the tool has to take a turn somewhere here so wherever it will take a turn the, that portion will not have any teeth right so tool run this portion is known as tool tool is going in this way then when it reaches here it has to take a turn okay then it will come in this way right so definitely this portion definitely this portion will have no teeth so this is the practical gear double helical gear is a practical gear okay herringbone gear does not have this tool run on herringbone gear does not have this tool run on so if you draw herringbone gear how it will look like it will simply look like this there is no tool run out for herringbone gear but questions are being asked what is herringbone gear what is double helical gear right in both these gears herringbone gear double helical helical gear the axial thrust is missing the axial thrust is missing okay now this was about parallel shafts this was about parallel shafts let us see what will happen if the shafts are intersecting let us see what will happen if the shafts are intersecting the rolling motion the rolling motion for inter two for between two intersecting shafts can be transformed okay using two conical surfaces right this is one cone you can see this and this is the second cone right two axes this is the one of the axes and this is another x you can see the axes are intersecting okay so if this ro rotates this will cause rotation of this right so if you use a part of the cone we can use a part of the cone to form gears we can use a part of the cone to form the gears right this kind of gears are known as bevel gears this kind of gears are known as bevel gears okay so this bevel gears you can see the shafts are intersecting shafts are intersecting right this is a shaft this is a shaft and these are intersecting okay it needn't be parallel oh sorry perpendicular it didn't intersect at a 90 degree but generally it does generally it does okay what now again bevel gears can be classified as straight bevel gear or spiral bevel gear bevel gears can be classified as straight bevel gear or spiral bevel gear what is straight bevel gear if the teeth are straight if the teeth are straight the gear is known as the teeth are straight this is how we draw it this is how we draw it bevel gears this is one of the soft this one of the stuff so if the teeth are straight okay the teeth are straight then the gear is known as straight bevel gear and if the teeth are curved 
if the teeth are curved here you can see the teeth are straight right if the teeth are curved it is known as spiral barrier right this classification is interest uh, easy but the more more important point to remember about here is about what are where are bevel gears used? Bevel gears are used for intersecting shafts. Okay, so bevel gears are a part of cone. Okay. Bevel gear is part of cone. These are known as generating surface. This is the gear generating surface. Gear generating surface. Okay. And there is Gerol bevel gear and metric gears, small, small classifications. These are again part of bevel gears. If the two gears used are exactly same, if the two gears are used exactly same, exact bevel gears, they need not be same, right? As in this case, they need not be same, right? But if they are exactly same, they are known as metric gears. They are known as metric gears, okay. And what is Gerald bevel gear? Gerald bevel gear are actually bevel gears with very small angle of curvature. If the tooths are very very smallly curved, if the tooths are very very smallly curved, right? On the gears, the tools are curved but very small amount of curve. Tools are curved but very small amount of curve. It is known as general bevel gear. Okay, metric gears are important. Metric gears are important. Okay, if you want to draw metric gears, you have to draw simply two exact gears. You have to draw simply. Right. This angle should be 45 degree completely and both the gears should be exactly the same. The term is used many places, both the gears are exactly same. These are two exact bevel gears, okay. This is known as metric gears. This is also known as metric gears. I hope you are able to understand all these things right now if the shafts are skew shafts what are skew shafts which are neither parallel nor intersecting neither parallel nor intersecting okay now in this case pure rolling is not at all possible we have to satisfy ourselves with rolling plus partial sliding okay pure rolling is possible between two conical surface between two para cylindrical surface right so uh, pure rolling is possible for spur gears for uh, bevel gears for helical gears but not for gears which are used in neither in shafts which are neither parallel nor intersecting now the first kind of gears that will be used for skew shafts are spiral gears okay spiral gears are also known as cross helical gears you can see this is one shaft this is one shaft this shaft are neither intersecting nor parallel okay so, how is this kind of gear made? Simple. This kind of gears are made using skew lines. The gears are made using skew lines. I'll give you a slight drawing. I'll give you a slight drawing for the skew lines. Okay. So, you can see here, you can see here, right? So this line it is being revolved throughout the gear. This line is being revolved throughout the gears. These are known as this is known as skew line. This is known as skew line. Or and this surface, this surface is known as hyperboloid surface. The surface is known as hyperboloid hyperboloid surface and these lines are known as skew lines these lines are known as skew lines right okay so just remember we will not go much into detail here right we will not go much into detail here the lines are, uh, this kind of gears are known as spiral gear okay 
so high what next is hypoid gear hypoid gear is also kind of a spiral gear only difference is that uh, we are using a crown we are using a crown even if you see here this is one of the axes right and the other axis is going this one right both the axes are not meeting each other right both the axes are not meeting each other right this is coming out of the board and this is passing this way this is coming out of the board and this is passing out this way right so whenever the space between where is this hypoid gear used whenever the space between two non intersecting non parallel shafts is very less we use hypoid gear because this crown is very thin this crown is very thin okay so this is basically nothing else but a thinner version of spiral gears well we should just know the terms okay yes. okay the next is the warm and warm wheel next is the warm and warm wheel this is known as the warm and this is known as the warm wheel so we'll have teeth here also see i am not showing the teeth here i am not showing the teeth here this is an example of warm and warm wheel this is the warm we can see and this is the wheel you can see this is the warm and this is the wheel right so this is also a non intersecting non parallel sub this is one of the subs you can see and where is the other sub this is the shaft right these two are non intersecting non parallel shafts so what is the benefit of this wheel what is the benefit of this wheel the most important point about this wheel is the very high speed reduction possible very high speed reduction possible speed reduction of somewhere around 30 is to 1 or even now it is even better better speed reduction some around 200 is to 1 the speed reduction of around 200 is to 1 is also possible using warm and warm wheel okay so have you ever seen a warm 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 wheel right in the back side of the guitar if you ever happen to see back side of a guitar right you can see a warm and warm wheel combination right okay let us see one another type of gear system this is known as the rack and pinion system okay this is the rack this is the rack and this is the pinion this is the pinion this is the rack and this is the pinion so what is the importance of this gear system okay this the this does not uh, this rack does not have any shaft okay the rack will make a reciprocating motion and the pinion will make a rotary motion right so this system this rack and pinion it is used to transmit rotational motion into translation or vice versa to convert rotational motion into translation motion or vice versa okay so we will be using this all these gears right we will be using all these gears uh, according to the requirement okay according to the requirement i hope you got a basic idea of different types of gear systems